All right, we begin our conversation about momentum by talking about the center of mass. Um, and the reason we do this is because reducing a system to its center of mass simplifies some things and makes some things pretty possible as far as uh, logical jumps go for momentum. So the idea behind the center of mass of an object and the way that we treat it in physics is that we say, that we pretend, um, that all of the mass of an object we pretend that all of it is located at its center. That way we don't have to deal with anything like it's spinning or anything like that. Every bit of the mass is located at the center. And for the center of mass, the object balances. It's the balance point for an object. And the object spins about the center of mass. This is, being, this is going to be a lot more important when we talk about... Um, angular momentum, but the balance point is a great way to find the center of mass by doing things. Now, for most of what we look at, the center of mass of an object falls right at its center. Uh, so if we look at a meter stick, a horribly drawn meter stick, but if this is one meter long, the center of mass of our meter stick is 0.5 meters from any end. That's where the center of mass is. <clears throat> So the object balances there, all of its mass is located there. Finding the center of mass of a continuous object requires an integral, and that's not something that we're going to have to do. We, and by we, I mean me and the college board, are more interested that you find the center of mass of a system of objects. So if this is mass 1, this is mass 2, and this is mass 3, what we want is the center of mass of everything. So let's say this is 1 kilogram, this is 2 kilograms, and this is 3 kilograms. Now let's say we start measuring here, that's 1 meter, that's 2 meters, that's 3 meters, I know it doesn't look like that, 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter. We want the location of the center of mass, well the location of the center of mass, simple formula, m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 all over m1 plus m2 plus m3 or each of these or each of our masses now what we did in class with the lab we had a meter stick and we put a weight on it we had a fulcrum come out and right here was the location of the center of mass of the system. That's mass 2 and its location. We were on a meter stick. We could find it. And this was mass 1, the meter stick. And all we knew was x1, its location. And we used this formula in order to find the entire mass of the system based on this being the center of mass because it's the balance point. Um, and each of these two things were parts of the system, not the whole system. So when we look at it this way, x center of mass is going to be uh, 1 kilogram times 0 meters. That's just where it happens to be located. Plus 2 kilograms times 2 meters. Plus 3 kilograms times 3 meters. All divided by, I mean, yeah, 1 plus 2 plus 3. 1 plus 2 plus 3. So that's 6 kilograms. Um, 4 plus 9, that's gross. Um, we get 14 over 6 meters as the location of our center of mass. That's um, 2 and a third. So the location of our center of mass happens to be somewhere in here. And what we can do for this system, now that we know where the center of mass of the system is, is pretend that each bit of mass in the system is located at the center of mass. So this also applies to a system. 
And this is what we're going to want to move towards. Uh, that's going to be in our second video. This one is just going to talk about the center of mass. Now, center of mass in one dimension is very simple. Center of mass in two dimensions becomes a little bit more complicated. So let's say we have four identical, well, it's not making them identical. Let's say that's two kilograms, that's two kilograms, that's two kilograms. We'll get crazy and say that was four kilograms. Put it on a coordinate system, say that's one meter, and that's one meter. And we want to find the center of mass of this system of four objects. It's in two dimensions. Um, it's really simple. We do an X center of mass and a Y center of mass because these masses are distributed in both the X direction and the Y direction. We look at their mass distribution in the X direction and the Y direction. So that's uh, one, two, three, and four just so we can keep up with it. So you have mass one, two kilograms times its X location, zero, plus mass two, two kilograms times its location in the X direction, zero, plus mass three, four kilograms times its location in the X direction, one, plus the two kilogram mass located one meter away. All divided by two plus two plus two, six, four, ten. The location of the X center of mass based on that is four plus two divided by ten or zero point six meters. Do the same thing in the Y. So for mass one we have two kilograms located at zero in the Y plus two kilograms located at one in the Y for mass two plus four kilograms located at one in the Y, plus two kilograms located at zero in the Y. All again, all divided by 10, and that gives us 0.6 meters. So, 0.6 meters in the X, 0.6 meters in the Y, that's more or less the center of mass in the system. That's all there is to that. Now, when we start talking about continuous objects, like a loop of wire, which are really the only center of mass questions I've ever seen on an AP test um, outside of rotation questions. <clears throat> and you want the center of mass of this system. We say each side is one meter, has an even mass density. What we have to do is take each loop and reduce it to a point. Uh, that's just annoying. We take each loop and reduce it to a point. So this becomes point 0.1, this becomes point 0.2, this becomes point 0.3. Each of them have the same mass. We'll call it n, n, and n. And what we've done is reduced each of these to those points at each of their center of masses. So um, we can put up a coordinate system. Locate each of these. That's point 0.5 meters. That's 0.5 meters. And then you can find the center of mass of that system. Most of the time, we're going to be able to do it by inspection. Um, the instances where that doesn't happen will come up. Now, <laughs> this is for center of mass location. We're going to get into a little bit center of mass velocity and talk about well, what's really in Let's say we have two masses um, like this. Uh, one and two. This one's moving with a velocity of two meters per second. This one's moving with a velocity of one meter per second. Let's say they're each one kilogram, just to be nice. Now, we can't look just at the x center of mass here. Uh, m1, x1 plus m2, x2 divided by m1 plus into, we can't look at the X center of mass because these objects are moving. So if we take that and divide that uh, by a change in time and then divide this whole thing, um, let's put it in parentheses, by a change in time, what we have is X center of mass over delta T, X1 over delta T, X2 over delta T. Lo and behold, we're talking about the velocity now of the center of mass of the system. M1 V1 plus M2 V2 over M1 plus M2. So there's a point in between these two things. This is 31 kilogram. It's directly in between those two. And that point is moving with the velocity of the center of mass of the system. So, really nice thing about this 
if I have an object that's moving with a constant velocity, the velocity of an object remains constant. unless a force acts on it. <clears throat> so, as long as there are no forces acting on this object, there are no... This is, after all, Newton's first law, or Galileo's law of motion, depending on how historically accurate you want to be. The velocity of an object remains constant unless a force acts on it. We can say the same thing about the velocity of the center of mass of the system. If we are considering this system to be this center of mass, then it remains the same regardless of what happens between these two objects. Those two objects hitting is not a net outside force acting on the system. It's an internal force, like you punching yourself in the face or trying to lift yourself up. It just doesn't amount to anything. And so what we can say is that when the net outside force is equal to zero, sorry, the velocity of the center of mass of a system is constant. As long as there's no force acting on the system, and by that I mean nothing's nailed down, the velocity of the center of mass remains constant. That's going to let us do some really cool things tomorrow. Now. That also holds true when the velocity of the center of mass of the system is zero. And I want to talk about one quick and hard example about that. It was on the worksheet that we had uh, briefly. So um, let's say we have a boat. It's not going to be a well-drawn boat. And it's leaning up against a dock. We can tell it's a dock because I've labeled it a dock. <clears throat> and this boat has a mass of 100 kilograms. We have a boy standing in a boat, on one end of the boat. He's a boy, so he has a mass of, well, he's getting there, 50 kilograms, about 120 pounds. And let's say that this boat is right up against the dock and the boat is um, five meters long. It's a 15 foot boat, so it's not a small boat. But the location of the center of mass of the boat The location of the center of mass of the boat is 2.5 meters away from the dock. The boy is 50, I'm sorry, 5 meters away from the dock. Um, what's going to happen is that the boy is going to walk towards the dock. Now, um, right now, the location of the center of mass of the entire system is the boy's mass. We'll call him mass 1. 50 kilograms times 5 meters plus the boat's mass 100 kilograms times 2.5 meters over 150 kilograms so 250 kilogram meters uh, plus 250 kilogram meters divided by 150 kilograms. The location of the center of mass then is, the location of the center of mass is 3.3 meters away from the dock, um, which means that the center of mass is located here. 3.3 meters away from the dock. And after the boy walks towards the dock, um, after what we just said, if there are no outside forces acting on the boat, boy, boat on the boat boy system, then the center of mass is going to remain 3.3 meters away from the dock. But the location of the boy and the boat will have both changed. Um, the boat will have moved a little bit, and the boy will be standing here. Now, <clears throat> 3.3 meters, this is 2.5 meters. We can do this by inspection. Uh, 
this distance here. Sorry. This distance here is 0 0.83 meters away. That's how far away the center of mass of the boat is from the center of the boat. And guess what? It's still going to be that far away, it's just on the other side. Keep doing that. 0 0.83 meters away. The whole boat boy thing moved. The center of mass stayed in the same place. That's 0 0.83 meters away. Um, The whole thing is now 1.67 meters away, and we've moved that far away from the dock. The idea behind this is that the center of mass did not move because the center of mass was not moving to begin with. Um, we'll look at this problem more and move on from center of mass into center of mass velocity and momentum.